So what I want to do is take a look at some examples of pairs of graphs and determine if they are isomorphic or not. And if they are isomorphic, then we should give an isomorphism. And if not, we need to explain why they're not isomorphic. So let me just remind you what an isomorphism is. Basically, it's going to be some mapping. And I'll just call it this sigma map. It doesn't really matter which letter you use to represent the map. But normally, we use some kind of Greek letter. So sigma is going to be a map from the vertices of the first graph to the vertices of the other graph, such that such that, well, first of all, if there is an edge UV in the first graph, well, then that edge has to be in the other graph, but after the mapping. So sigma of U, sigma of V has to be in the other graph. And whoops, not, not G again, H. H is the other graph. And not only that, but only then. So it's if and only if. Um, in other words, when this is an edge in the graph H, then UV must have been an edge in the graph G and vice versa. Okay, so let's take a look if we are able to find such a mapping, which is an isomorphism, between these graphs. So what you might want to check is that because an isomorphism is a mapping from the vertices of, the, of G to the vertices of H, and remember that it should be a bijection, bijection. If you do not remember what bijection means, please rewatch the video on isomorphisms because that will explain the idea of a bijection, which is one to one and onto. First, since we have to map the vertices of G to the vertices of H, we'll check that the, the uh, vertices and uh, the number of vertices are the same. So let's just go ahead and do that. Well, I'll use purple to sort of indicate this graph G and what is the size of the vertex set of G? Well, we can count up the vertices and should be pretty quick, we get five. And if we count up the edges of G, how many edges do we have? This is the size of the graph, it's five. So remember that the number of vertices is called the order and the number of edges is called the size and for this particular graph, they're both five. And if we do the same over here, we're going to get that the number of vertices of H is also 5 and the number of vertices, oh sorry, edges of H is also 5. Okay, so, so far no big problem. But now I want to explain to you why we are not going to be able to find such a mapping. In fact, it turns out that these ones are not isomorphic, so these two graphs G and H are not isomorphic. So remember, that's the symbol for isomorphic, and it turns out they are not. So why is that? Well, if we were going to try to map the vertices of G to the vertices of H, I want to point out a special vertex right here. Well, in fact, you might choose another example, but let me choose a darker color. Let's take a look at this vertex right here. And I'm going to call that vertex V. Now, it has some neighbors in the graph G, and I'm going to call them U1, U2, U3, and U4. So in other words, we know that this is an edge, V, U1. That is an edge in the graph G. Similarly, V, U2, and V, U3, and V, U4. They are all edges in the graph G. So that's how we write that. The graph G has an edge set, E of G, and these are edges contained in the edge set. Okay, well, we know that if we had such a mapping, if there is such a sigma, if this little backwards E means if there exists, so this means there exists, This little backwards E means there exists. So if there exists such a sigma, which is an isomorphism, then, well, what happens? What happens when we take sigma and apply it to each of these vertices? Sigma of V1, sigma of U, sorry, sigma V, sigma V1, let's write that down. Sigma of V, sigma of U1, that's got to be an edge in the graph H simply because it was an edge over here in the graph G before the mapping. So after the mapping, it has to be an edge in the graph H. And actually, the same thing happens for each of these. So that's because of this, 
And similarly, you could figure out that sigma of v, sigma of u2 must be an edge in the graph h, and etc. for the other two. So I'll just write those down, sigma of v, sigma of u3, sigma of v, sigma of u4. These have to be in the edge set of the graph h. Okay, let's figure out what that means. Sigma of v is some vertex in the graph h. So let's take a look at the vertices of the graph h and see if we can find any vertex which has degree at least 4 because look, sigma v is a vertex and it's together with all these different edges which happen, which if there was an isomorphism there would have to be in h. However, if you look here in the graph h, you can easily see that the degrees are 1, 3, 2, and 3, and 1. So we can see that sigma of v must have degree, degree 4, but h has no such vertex. And that is exactly why these are not isomorphic graphs. So we're going to see this general idea in a little bit um, more, uh, I guess, rigor. And we'll prove that, in fact, when you have an isomorphism, a vertex of a particular degree has to map to a vertex of the same degree. We'll prove that a little bit later on. And uh, for now, what I want to do is move on to the next pair of graphs. So let's take a look now at this pair of graphs. It might seem a bit harder because we're looking at two graphs. Here's G and here's H. And these graphs are much bigger, more vertices, more edges. In fact, if we go ahead and count them up, we'll find out that this is a graph on 10 vertices. So the order of the graph, oops, I should write of G, is 10. And let's figure out how many edges it has. Well, I'd like to point out that the edges are basically consisting of this cycle around the outside, which is five edges. And there's another five edges that go in the middle as another five cycle. And then there's some edges that go in between those two five cycles. And I'm just highlighting those in purple. And those ones are another five. So we have five and another five and another five. So there's 15 edges. And I assume that you could easily pause this video and find out that the number of vertices in this other graph H is also 10 and the number of edges in this graph H is also 15. Okay, now let's see if we ran into any problems that are similar to what we just saw. In the previous example we had a vertex in the graph G of degree 4 and then there was no vertex over here in the graph H of degree 4, so we couldn't map it. Now, what we take, let's take a look at the degrees of the vertices in these graphs, and we're going to see that in fact G is 3 regular. 3 regular. That means every vertex in G has degree 3. And if you look at H, you'll find out that it's also 3 regular. Okay, so maybe we have a hope of showing that they are isomorphic. We don't know yet. Let's find out. What I want to do first is I'm going to point out some structure in G, and I'm going to see if I can find a similar structure in H. So I'm going to go ahead and just point out again that these edges basically look like a five cycle that goes around the outside, and I'm going to do that in the orange color here. And also, a five cycle that goes through the middle here like this and then this extra bit that sort of matches up the five cycle. So we can see that there's a five cycle and another five cycle and some sort of edges that go between the two five cycles. So let's see if the same kind of structure happens over here and we should hopefully see that it does work out. I'm just going to draw this part in orange. I found a five cycle, it goes like this. There's one, two, three, four, five edges there. And there's another five cycle, which 
is up here and I can do it in the same sort of way where then in between the two five cycles I actually have these sort of edges that match up in between so that goes between one of the vertices that was in the red five cycle to one of the vertices that was in this orange five cycle and we can keep matching them up like this and like this and like this and like this so now we have a feeling that okay maybe they are in fact isomorphic so let's try to find that kind of map sigma which will take the vertices of this graph G and map them to the graph the vertices of the graph H so let's try to figure out a way to find this isomorphism and then check that it is in fact an isomorphism so what I want to do is I want to label the vertices of the graph G and I'm going to label them like this one two three four five that goes around the outside five cycle and then the inside vertices I'll just like write those as six seven eight nine and ten so if I want to think of the edge set of G it's really consisting of a couple of cycles and I'll write it like this the cycle one two three four five and remember what this means this is cycle notation so it means that we have the edge one two we have the edge two three and the edge three four the edge four five and also the edge five one that's what this means and we have another one of these guys and it's this one here it goes six and now don't get fooled it's not six seven eight it goes from six to eight to ten to seven back to nine so six eight 10, 7, 9, and then 9 goes back to 6. Okay, so that's the other bit of the edges. And then there's a bit more. And those are these sort of purpley spokes that go between the two five cycles. And I'm going to just write out what they are exactly. That's 1 and 6, 2 and 7, 3 and 8, 4 with 9, and 5 with 10. So I guess this makes it a little bit tricky when you have a 10 written like that. Maybe I should put sort of brackets around the 10s. It's not 510. It's not like that. Okay, so this is one way to look at it. The edge set of the graph G is really composed of these three bits. A 5 cycle, another 5 cycle, and then some edges. Remember that the 5 cycles here really represent 5 edges. And now when we want to figure out where we might map these vertices over here too, what we can do is we can start labeling the graph H in a, in a way that's going to make our mapping very nice. In fact, what I want to do is I want to call, so right now the vertex set of G is this set of integers, 1, 2, all the way up to 10. And the vertex set of H, what I'll use is a bit different notation. I could use really any notation I want. I could call them also like 1 prime, 2 prime, or something like that. But I'll just call them V1, V2, to V10 just so that it's a little bit easier to keep track if they don't have a V in the name then they're from G and if they have a V in the name then they're from H it's just sort of easier to keep track so what if I just decide that I want to map um, V sorry not VI we want to map vertex I to vertex VI. In other words, you would want 1 to map to V1 and 2 to map to V2 and all of that. That way we would be able to figure out the description of our mapping very, very easily and we just have to make sure that the labels here are correct. So what would we do if we started with V1 right there? Well, we see this orange cycle has V1 and we're knowing we're mapping 1 to V1. So I may as well go ahead and write V2 right here, V3, V4 and V5 because that way the edges of this orange 5 cycle are being mapped to this orange 5 cycle right here when I map 1 to V1, 2 to V2, etc. And now when I look across at the red 5 cycle and I want to figure out what labels to put, well I say if I look at this vertex right here it's also incident with V1 and because of the original structure we know that that must be the same as being incident with 6 over here because 1 is adjacent to 6 so we're going to go ahead and call this V6 
And now you might be tempted to say, oh, that's coming from this cycle V6, V8, V10, V7, and so that must mean this is V6, so this is V8. But be careful, because whatever label goes here should be so that its vertex is adjacent also to V4. And that corresponds to 4 over here, which should be adjacent to V9. So really, if you go this way in the red cycle, it's like traveling backwards in the notation here. So this would actually be V9. And if you want to think about going through this cycle as V6, V8, V10, V7, V9, you'd go this way. V8 being here. And let's check. It makes sense because it's also adjacent to V3. And then we have V10. And finally, V7, which is again adjacent to V9. So really, in the way that I just applied the labelings, I have indeed checked that all of the edges here get mapped to edges of H. But I would suggest that you try for each individual edge showing that it is indeed an edge here. I mean, all you'd have to do is say, okay, 1, 2 is an edge in the graph G, and then what happens to sigma 1, sigma 2? Well, that is V1, V2. Is that an edge? Well, let's look. V1, V2. Yes, it is an edge in this graph H. And you just do this type of argument for every one of the 15 edges. But because as I labeled it, I sort of explained how we are preserving edges, I expect that you can do this part on your own. Okay, so that's all for this video and hope this makes sense.